David, we just heard that two key provisions were killed from this defense bill that basically water down the requirement to make public any information about spacecraft, about alien remains. I take it you're disappointed. Yes, yeah, thank you for having me on today. And, you know, what we're witnessing right now is, quite frankly, uh, the greatest legislative failure in, in American history. You know, you had a very strong amendment um, for government transparency on this issue, whether you believe um, my allegations or not. Uh, you know, this is a government transparency issue at large. And, you know, the legislation was modeled off of, uh, you know, previous government transparency um, issues. I mean, so we had a mixed bag of success, right? Um, if we believe the conference report uh, that was submitted uh, last week, Section 1687, which uh, effectively fences off money to illegal special access programs, something that uh, Marco Rubio, Mark Warner, and his staff on the uh, Senate Select for Committee for Intelligence championed. Uh, that did make it through uh, conference, and I do congratulate the senators that pushed hard to make sure that that was not removed during conference to help further this effort. It leaves the door open for anything that is, quote, national security, uh, we get to keep secret. 100%, and that's, and that's why we were going to have a neutral nine-person panel, and all that was enumerated in, in the Schumer Rounds you know, amendment earlier this year. And, and, and that was not written in a vacuum. Uh, that was written you know, with other individuals bringing them information as well. All right. Uh, were you hoping to be on that panel, that nine-person panel that would make those decisions on what had to stay secret and what could be made public? Uh, certainly, it's not my place to be on the panel. I certainly uh, offered uh, through certain staff up to the White House. I would be happy to uh, participate. I mean, I'm happy to get coffee, for God's sakes. Uh, but you do know I was actually behind the scenes um, interviewing former undersecretaries, former uh, general officers, Nobel laureate type folks that would fill those specific billets on the you know U URRB, uh, which is the disclosure panel that was described in the Schumer amendments. So there are certainly people of high repute that were willing to serve on that panel to do their best to provide the president a recommendation on what he should disclose. And, and now that the panel is not um, uh, signed into public law on the legislative branch side, I mean, we need to advocate for the executive branch, you know, the office of the president through executive action um, to instate su such a body uh, to advise him on the best course of action now that, you know, Congress has failed to legislate appropriately. And um, I'm here to, you know, praise and admonish. I mean, certainly the Senate, um, thank you for proposing that legislation. I'm glad you got some provisions passed. But uh, folks in the House, I mean, it, a total failure. It's one yeah, of the biggest failures probably in the history of Congress. Yeah, you've had strong words for Representatives Mike Turner of Ohio and Mike Rogers of Alabama, both of whom helped kill those two key provisions. They're arguing classified information could leak, and uh, that, that would be dangerous to the United States of America. What's your answer to that? Well, classified information would not leak if the panel was appropriately administrated. Uh, there's other presidential panels very akin to this that have occurred over the last several decades, and none of that information illicitly leaked. The, the panel was supposed to review the classified records and provide the president a recommendation because he is the original classification authority, OCA, for the executive branch. And he makes that final classification determination. It's not the panel. They're just helping advise the president. So there, there's no reason for anything to leak, no national security equities to be compromised if conducted in a professional manner. Yeah, I was struck by something that Democratic Representative Jared Moskowitz of Florida recently said. Um, he said, quote, the reason why I got involved as we started asking questions, legitimate questions, the pushback we got is what interests me. He said, every time we pulled the thread and we stumbled on something, it seemed we would get stonewalled. In other words, if there's nothing to hide, why is everybody putting up such an effort to stonewall and and keep things secret and say you don't you can't be uh, privy to that information? That's what actually got him on board on this effort to get transparency. A hundred percent. And uh, Representative Nancy Mace, you know, requested through the Office of Secretary of Defense front office 
in early August to get me cleared to, you know, brief at the special access program level to the House Armed Services Committee. And, you know, as of uh, this taping right now, I still have not been approved for access to even talk to the Armed Services Committee, even though Representative Mace, her staff and other members such as uh, Matt Gates and and others, you know, have advocated for me to, you know, get those one-time uh, clearances since I am no longer read into some of those programs. And the, the Pentagon has sat on it. People who saw your big interview that aired here on News Nation and who watched your congressional mm -hmm. testimony, you know, people who might not buy everything you're saying, who are skeptics, have said over and over again, he has no first-hand knowledge. He is just telling what someone else told him or telling what he read. How do you respond to people who say, because you don't have any first-hand knowledge, maybe we shouldn't believe you? Well, uh, I couldn't be very upfront about my first-hand knowledge until recently. I got some other security approvals uh, through the pre-publication and security review process. Um, and I did have some first-hand knowledge of some specific uh, parts of the program. Uh, I'm currently drafting an op-ed that I'm going to release in a few weeks, and I will be discussing what I actually do know firsthand. I, I just could not overtly discuss that at the time, including at the hearing, because uh, the, you know, the Pentagon and the IC were sitting on some of my pre-publication and review uh, paperwork at the time, so I could not acknowledge that. When you say you have first-hand knowledge, you actually saw something yourself? Well, uh, the deeper description of what I know has been redacted. Uh, they proposed a redaction in a pre-publication and security review uh, response a few days ago, and um, they're telling me to withhold legally some of the first-hand knowledge I have, but I'm allowed to generally uh, discuss that I was read into a UAP-related program directly um, by the U.S. government. So I want to ask you about the fact that after you went public, both here on News Nation and in front of Congress, you got some backlash. You had a lot of attacks on you, including your medical records, which mm -hmm. seemed to have appeared somehow in, on an online website, uh, talking about an incident in your past, which you frankly had already talked mm -hmm. about to Ross Coltart uh, in his special for, uh, on you for News Nation. How did your medical information wind up on that website? Yeah, uh, about a week after the hearing, there was a hit piece on me out of The Intercept. And the uh, journalist, although I wouldn't call this guy a journalist, um, sounds like he's just a immature troll, to be quite honest with you. He went on The Hills um, a talk show, if you will, uh, a few days after the article dropped. And he said that there were uh, multiple DOD and IC uh, personnel that verbally tipped him off on where to look to get some records on a previous, you know, mental health um, uh, evaluation that I had uh, almost six years ago. So he himself admitted that the DoD and IC verbally tipped him off on, I think it's Breaking Points, the mm. the show that The Hill uh, publication. He literally admitted that on camera. You can look it up. Um, that he was tipped off by insiders about a few days after the hearing, and he admits it to himself. So I find that um, very troubling, and I encourage the DOD Inspector General Whistleblower Reprisal and Investigation staff to look into that, because you basically have um, probable security officers, because who would know this kind of information, providing a journalist's um, you know, private health information, right? Why do you think they did that? Was this some sort of t attempt to silence you? Oh, yeah, it's in intimidation. It's like kill the messenger, not the message. I mean, these are tactics that other whistleblowers, you know, have had to endure um, that have come forward, you know, in a similar fashion as myself. David, it was great to talk to you. Thank you so much. Really appreciate oh, sure. it. Yeah. yeah, I hope you'll come back. Yeah, no, thanks for having me on. Actually, he will come back tomorrow night. Uh, we will have part two of my interview with David Grush tomorrow, and he takes on his critics with the gloves off.